Hello, I'm Safi and for the Isolation Art School I'd like to share with you how to make a Hikaru Dorodango which basically means a shiny mud ball. One of the great things about making shiny mud balls is you don't need lots of equipment and you certainly don't need to spend any money. You just need access to a little bit of mud, maybe a small bucket full. The quality of that mud really doesn't matter. I live by the coast and so my mud's really sandy. Um, obviously, if your mud has got a lot of clay content in, that's going to make life a little bit easier, but any mud will do. You also need a sieve, household sieve will do, a tray if you're going to work inside, a couple of containers and a little bit of water. So the first thing I would recommend you do is just dry out the mud a little bit, maybe popping it into a tray or I've got it in this little lid of a cardboard box and and then while it's drying maybe just remove um, large stones that you can see first of all so once you've got the large bits of stone out the next thing you need to do is sieve the mud so get one of your containers sieve over it. It's not very easy to do one-handed. Um, and then you just want to sieve them up. And when you're left with the sort of stony bits, just get rid. And when you finish sieving, you should probably have I don't know, there's probably about a cup's worth in there. You don't need a huge amount. Before we add the water, what I would say is take um, a couple of handfuls out of the box that you've sieved um, into a separate pot because we'll need that later. And then the next thing you need to do is add the tiniest bit of water. gathering it up to make a ball. Okay, I've moved a bit in the house now, so hopefully you can see what I'm doing a bit better. And I'm literally just forming a sphere as best as I can. And at this stage, you can be quite um, firm with it. As it gets later on in the stages, you can't really change its shape. Turning it, maybe fill in some indents. Just try and get it into a sphere as best you can. It's really windy outside, so I'm not working in the garden. And obviously not everyone's got access to a garden, so um, it's quite good that I'm able to show you this is the sort of thing that you can do in your living room or kitchen or wherever and it doesn't have to create loads of mess. Obviously if you're working with small children it could get a little bit messier but you know it's only dirt, it's not like acrylic or plaster or any of these other materials that you spend hours afterwards trying to clear up. We've all got into the habit as well of washing our hands, so I don't feel I need to give any health and safety reminders about working with dirt from the outside. Actually, one bit of equipment I forgot to say you're going to need is a, is a plastic bag. Yeah, I've said the word plastic. I kind of, if I ever order anything online, Kind of keep stuff like this so if you've got like a ziplock bag that's great carry a bag or um possibly could put it in a, a 
plastic container, but we need to protect it underneath. I'll show you what I'm going to do in a minute. So when it's in a nice ball shape, what you want to do is pop it in the carrier bag, seal it, or tie it up, or put a band around it or something. And then you don't want it, it's still really quite soggy and soft, so you don't want it to get a soggy bottom. So what you want to do, and I'll just see if I can lift this here, is you just kind of want to make a little nest for it. You know, I've kind of got a little tea towel here. After about half an hour or an hour, take it out of the um, bag and you'll see it's, it's really um, wet. And what actually is happening is um, when it's sealed in the plastic bag, it's drawing out the moisture from inside of the ball, which is which is what you want. So and when I say half an hour to an hour, you know, when I first started making these, I was really sort of diligent with the timings. Now it's just I pop it in a bag and I'll I'll leave it, you know, I'll go off and have lunch or do whatever I need to do and come back to it at some point. And it can be left for hours, it's absolutely fine. But I'd say try and leave it for half an hour at least. And then when you've got it back out again, you'll notice it's still really quite wet. And so the next stage is, this is where the, I've got my tray um, to catch any of the, the mud that might fall. What you want to do is with the um, leftover mud you had from earlier, you want to sprinkle it on top. And then with your thumb, just gently brush it over a few times and then turn the ball over. Sprinkle. And wipe it over. But with this first round, or the first couple of rounds, I wouldn't do it for too long, maybe sort of coat it um, all over a couple of times. If you do it for too long, what will happen is it will just start to dry too quickly and you'll start to get cracks. So maybe just a little bit more. Rub it over with your thumb, turn it. Sprinkle, rub over with your thumb and turn it. Just be really, really gentle with it. And then, you pop it back in its bag. And pop it back on its little nest. And again, after about half an hour, Take it out of its plastic bag and just carry on with this sprinkling method. If at any point the ball does start to crack, um, just pop it back in the bag. So this method of making shiny mud balls um, became a bit of a craze in Japan about 20 years ago and in, in schools and in kindergartens. And this is largely due to um, a psychologist called Professor Keo, who developed a simple method of making the Doradango um, that could be taught to even really young, small children. And besides keeping them occupied um, for long periods of time, um, the activity enabled him to study aspects of children's play. And I myself have um, made Doradangos with people of all ages, from really small children up to adults. And it's really fascinating to see how um, engrossed people become in this 
method and you know for something that actually has no monetary value um, how people become very attached to them and treat them as if they're very very precious says you can't polish a turd and again pop it in its bag for half an hour or more make sure you pop it on its little cushion and then come back to it in a bit can see it's really starting to dry. It's starting to look a little bit smoother. When you feel it is really starting to dry out, you probably maybe put it in the bag three, maybe four times. Um, the next stage is it's possibly gonna be using your tray, or if you're outside just um, on the like a patio slab or something, what you wanna do is just rub your hand over the mud until you've kind of got um, a dusty hand and then you just want to brush your hand over that and what's happening here is basically we're starting to polish it but you just want the dust you just want that that's all you need is to shine it and you can shine that with carry on with your hands or you can I've got an old revolting bit of <laughs> tights here um, but any sort of really sort of soft micro cloth um, anything that's not going to damage the surface basically and then you just start polishing it So some people like to varnish their mud balls or even paint them. I don't. I kind of feel like it defeats the object a little bit, but um, they're your mud balls, so do what you like with them. Um, so yeah, just have a go. Um, it takes a little bit of practice, but I can assure you, even if yours end up a bit crumbly or a bit of a strange shape, um, guaranteed you are going to feel quite attached to them. So yeah, have fun, go play with some mud.